read the story of the two Marys, the mothers of the disciples John and Jacob, who are in a boat which is shipwrecked off the coast of southern France. Abandoned, they are fleeing after being banished from Palestine. The boat, with both Marys on board, sinks near Les Sainte Marie de la Mer, a small town in the Camargue, where the many branches of the River Rhone flow into the Mediterranean Sea. According to legend, Sara, a gypsy, watches the boat foundering from the beach. She spreads out her cloak and both Marys safely reach the shore. The Marys tell her the story of Christ's resurrection and Sara asks the women to baptize her. Every year, gypsies come to Les Sainte Marie. Not only gypsies from France, but also from Spain, Germany, Holland, and Belgium. They come to worship their patron saint, the woman they call Saint Sara. Although Sara has not been formally recognized by the church, it has made a gesture. It declared the 24th of May as Sara's official saint's day. In the days preceding Saint Sara's day, Many thousands of gypsies flocked to this town in the south of France. The town is too small to cope with this huge influx of people, and so some 20 sites are designated to the gypsies attending the festival, where basic amenities have been laid on. 
Le mot gitan, c'est... The word gypsy refers to lots of people. But it doesn't mean that everyone living in a trailer is a gypsy. There are various races. There are gypsies in Spain, Germany, Russia, and Poland. Gypsy is just a general word. It is something inside us, something we feel. Wherever we are, even if we live in a house, we feel not exactly outsiders, but uh, when we're with our brothers and sisters, we feel we're among our own folk. It's in our souls. Every race has its customs. Normally, we don't live in houses, but in trailers. If we want to leave, we load up the trailer and we're off. We're travelers. One day we're here, the next we're somewhere else. We feel free. Free compared to people who live in houses, but as far as the law is concerned, we have the same rights as others. We have to respect those rights too. Fortunately, we have a good life, especially our children. We send them to school more often nowadays. That's important too. They get an education there. If you ask them something, they know the answer. They know how to express themselves and say what they feel. In the past, our children didn't go to school as often, and so they didn't know as much. Schooling is important. Then we can talk to people, and people listen to us too. According to legend, Sara was the first gypsy to be baptized, and so many gypsies want to have their children baptized in Saint Marie. Every day, a stream of baptisms is carried out in the church. group of pastoral workers also arrive in Sainte Marie. They also stay at the various sites with their caravans. Claude Dumas is one of the pastoral workers. He is a priest and comes from a gypsy family himself. He conducts the service. The Catholic Travelers Movement works closely with gypsies. We are a pastoral service which preaches about the resurrection of Christ. The gypsies have always come here. The pastoral workers came later. 
At first, we wondered how these people, who were here on a pilgrimage, were, were ignored by everyone, including the church. At first, the gypsies were more or less confined to the crypt, and that's where they stayed. Then we thought, we should help these people. For a while, tens of thousands of gypsies take over the town. The townsfolk don't know what has hit them. Shopkeepers shut up shop much earlier than usual. In the past, we parked our caravans all over the place. Without knowing it, it was publicity for St. Marie. So tourists started coming here. The townsfolk prefer them to us because they don't make money on us. They make a bit, but not enough. We got them the publicity, but they don't want us anymore. We used to go out on the town until the small hours, but the police won't let us make any noise after 11 o'clock now. Oh, the shops closed too. It was a different story 20 years ago. All the shops and cafes stayed open in those days, but now everything is closed by 10 o'clock. May 24th is the important day for the gypsies. It is St. Sara's Day, they say. In the morning, they visit the crypt where the statue of their holy Sara is on show. Je 
The gypsies come here to touch their saint, just like the rock and lure. Mothers used to bring their children to touch Jesus. Then they were blessed. We want to touch. That's the important thing. That's why we always hug one another when we meet. It's the touching that counts. It's a form of communication. When we touch Zara, we receive her blessing. When someone dies, or when I want to thank her, I pray to her, just like I pray to Jesus or to Our Lady. I sometimes come here during the year with my husband and children. Then we pray in the church and we light a candle. And we do that if we have problems or to show our thanks. When something nice and unexpected happens, for instance, then we say, come on, we'll go and light a candle as a sign of our gratitude. Later in the day, the statue of Sara will be taken from the crypt and carried to the sea accompanied by a procession of gypsies. They even make crosses which they carry during the procession. The crosses are abundantly decorated with flowers and sequins. The shrine is slowly lowered from an alcove high above. The ornately painted chest with lavish mountings contains the remains of the two Marys. The gypsies do their best to touch the shrine. They hold their candles as high as possible.
Surrounded by horsemen from the Camargue and preceded by women in local costume, the procession of gypsies carries the sacred Sara to the sea. During the procession, we're led by the Holy Spirit and the Lord. Together, we try to proclaim our faith as intensely as possible in the hope of getting really close to the Lord for the benefit of us all, travelers and caravan dwellers. This is our custom. Our new year begins and the old year ends when the Marys are carried out. To us, she's our big sister. She's about 2,000 years old, just like the Holy Marys, the nieces of the Virgin Mary. They were put into a boat to appease the god of the sea, but the sea didn't want them. And so they came to Sainte Marie, and Zara received them and gave them comfort. And the Holy Marys, the mothers of Jacob and John, told Zara who Jesus was and what had happened. Then she embraced their faith. She is our patron saint. To us, she is holy. She has never been recognized by the church. She was declared a saint by the people. I don't believe that saintliness has anything to do with being recognized by the Vatican or things like that. It has more to do with people meeting someone and saying, that person is special. He or she has something inside which makes him different to others. Carrying her to the sea is repeating what happened thousands of years ago. Each time we do it, it's as if we are returning to something miraculous. People who go to Jerusalem follow the footsteps of Jesus. When we go to the sea, we follow the footsteps of Sarah. records which still exist of this old tradition, 
I noticed a prayer which is still recited by the gypsies. Holy Sara, pray for us and keep us in good health. Protect us on our travels. Change the hearts of those who think badly of us.